the bait we use in Rivers Inlet is, especially for big fish, is a big herring. Now the herring are caught somewhere on the west coast, prepared and frozen for us, and then we keep them in our freezer, bring them out, thaw them, put them in our brine, and that just makes them nice and stiff and shiny for us. And that's what we use for the salmon. So the guide, or the fisher, take the herring, just cut them like that. A little cut there. And that's my cut plug. Every guide and every guest that's salmon fished before will do this slightly differently. But the basic format is put your hooks in all the way through the herring, trying to scrape off as little scales as possible so that it retains its shine, which is the attractor for the salmon. And your first few tries, even mine, when I get back for the start of the season, are usually pretty rugged, but before long, you're back to being quite smooth and professional again. So there's my hookup, including my guide secret stinger here, which you need to go with the guide to get. It gets the fish that are even just smelling the, the bait. So, and I'd say at least 50% of the fish that I catch in Rivers Inlet have got this small hook in the side of its mouth. And the art of salmon fishing is really just a dance. You have to tire that fish out. You let him go, you bring him in. You let him go, you bring him in. Sometimes he's under the boat, sometimes he goes around back. But that's the beauty, that's the fun of it. Gets your heart pounding. A lot of other places on the coast, they use downrigging equipment and attracting devices, but you still don't need to do that in Rivers Inlet when, you, when you're gonna catch fish without those new newfangled gear. A good old cup plug pairing is the way to go. And as you can see this morning with the 60 pounder on the dog, it's proof that the cup plug is the way to go here.